Hey there, and welcome to this episode of The Amateur Wino. It's a quiet Sunday in New York today, and I've got a bottle that I think fits the mood. This is the Soder Vineyards North Valley Pinot Noir. It's from the Willamette Valley in Oregon. Um, and I say that it fits the mood for today because um, I've had it before, and I found it to be a very subtle and nuanced and elegant Pinot Noir. And I consider it to be one of my favorite finds this year, which is why I'm sharing it with you now. Um, so while I open this bottle, I'm going to tell you the story about how I first uh, came to know this wine. Um, and actually, a little background before that. Um, I don't know uh, how you guys are, but I'm a big Pinot Noir fan. And my favorite wines are probably Pinot Noirs from France, uh, specifically Burgundy, uh, followed very closely by Pinot Noirs from California. and. Um, uh, over the years, I've tried a good number of Oregon Pinot Noirs, probably 60 to 70 of them. Up until I found the Soder wines, I had just never been crazy about Oregon Pinot Noir. Definitely found a lot of really nice ones, but nothing that made me go wow and made me say, I'm going to spend the dollars that I would have spent on Burgundy or a good California Pinot Noir. Um, on you know on this Oregon Pinot Noir instead and um, so in that sense the soda wines were a turning point for me and I found these kind of earlier this year um, I was at a trade tasting and I tried this bottle uh, there are this wine actually not this bottle but uh, this wine and also the 2006 Mineral Springs single vineyard bottling from Soda Vineyards and it was the perfect opportunity to taste um, the wine in the sense that I got to taste a lot of other Oregon Pinot Noirs at the same tasting to compare. So I've had a lot of the, the kind of major ones that people talk about a lot. And uh, when I had these Soder wines, there was something different about them. There was, uh, there was just a very fine-grained kind of quality to the tannin um, that just made it very silky and delicious. Um, and it was very fruity in a way that still kind of spoke of uh, the terroir in Oregon without uh, without necessarily being um, too much on the side of kind of olive and licorice flavors, which I get a lot uh, from Oregon Pinot Noirs. And um, sometimes it's just a little bit too much for me in a way. Um, and what I just found was this great balance in the soda wines and, um, and like I said, a certain fineness to it that just made it feel very refined. Um, when I was at this trade tasting where I had these, you know, I remarked to the man who was pouring the wines how they were just hands down the best Oregon Pinot Noirs I, I had ever had up to that point. And uh, I think he was pleased to hear that. And it turns out that the, the man I was speaking to was Tony Soder, who is the owner and proprietor of Soder Vineyards. Um, and for those of you who may not know, uh, about uh, Tony Soder. He's, he's something of a legend in California winemaking. Um, he's been doing it since I think the 70s um, and, and he made wines um, not only at uh, really famous wineries like Spotswood and Arujo and Schaefer but also at his own winery that he started called Etude which is now a very well-known label and I think was purchased by one of the conglomerates uh, several years ago, um, and I think he's still marginally involved, but I think he turned his attention to making wines in Oregon, which I understand is his home state, um, and his wife's home state as well, I think, and, uh, and he's been making Pinot Noirs, um, and I've heard of the Soder Pinots for a long time and how they were supposed to be excellent, and they certainly lived up to their billing the first time I had them. The reason why I have two glasses in front of me is I'm also doing a little bit of a head-to-head -head test between two different Riedel glasses uh, that I got recently um, in, a, uh, in a deal from, uh, from like a sample sale. Um, and I'm doing a review of these glasses because I think these glasses are generally available um, on sales uh, on the internet or perhaps at a store near you. The two glasses that I'm talking about are the Flow Pinot Noir glass from Riedel and then this one is the Tyrol Pinot Noir glass spelled T-Y-R-O-L, um, and I think the idea behind the Tyrol glass is that it's stemless, uh, so not the kind of glass that you would knock over or your kids might knock over or something like that. Um, so it does have definitely a different feel, almost looks like a, uh, like a brandy glass or, or a cognac glass, something like that, um, but definitely with the size of the bowl, it's, it's a Pinot 
glass. And uh, this one, from what I understand, is leaded crystal as opposed to non-leaded. They call it non-leaded crystal in this. From what I understand, non-leaded crystal is just basically glass. Um, so the reason why I got this glass was um, it, the shape of it reminds me a little bit of the very expensive Riedel Sommelier glass, uh, which I think is something like $150, $200. And um, a friend of mine let me drink out of his sommelier glass once. And um, I have to say, there was something really super extra about that experience. But I'm not about to drop that kind of money on a wine glass. So I uh, found this glass and thought, hey, might be a reasonable facsimile. has a similar kind of very wide bowl at the bottom. And something about the opening, the tapered kind of nature of the opening kind of reminded me of the sommelier glass. And I think this one was available in a set of two for under $20, something like $17, $18. Um, and then this one was available in a set of two for slightly over $22, I think it was, or uh, over $20, I think it was $22, um, which was, I think, a dramatic sale off the retail price since it is leaded crystal. Uh, so we'll find out today if, uh, if the crystal makes a difference. Uh, anyway, back to the wine, the Soder North Valley uh, Pinot Noir on the nose has very same pretty notes that I noticed when I first tasted this at a trade tasting and uh, yeah so basically what I'm getting is very balanced nose on, the, on uh, this wine um, you definitely get some uh, appealing sweet red fruits it's really pretty really smooth it's got, you know, nice impactful flavor uh, from the fruit without being overpowering. It's kind of light the way a Pinot Noir should be. It's got good acidity, so I know that this is going to be really good with food. So the interesting thing is, let's, let's see if I can get a different kind of impression from the two different glasses. I definitely get more um, open aromas from the Tyrol glass right now, um, so much so that it's almost a little overpowering. There's kind of a nice acidity to this wine uh, that comes through on the nose and almost kind of gives you that little kind of nose tickle uh, that you get when something's got, you know, a tangy acidity to it. But that's really, really pretty. Definitely getting a lot of aromas from this glass. Getting somewhat less from the, uh, from the flow glass, so maybe there is something to having leaded crystal. It's definitely got kind of a tangy acidity on the palate. Pretty fruits very silky kind of mouth feel. You know, it's interesting, I do get a slightly different um, uh, uh, flavor kind of profile drinking the same wine from the two glasses. I get a little bit more of what I consider the dark notes of this uh, wine from the Tyrol glass. Um, and by dark notes, I mean, you know, a little kind of earthiness. Um, you know, I almost uh, think of it like an analogy to music, like these are the bass notes, the thing that kind of anchors the wine, whereas it kind of came off as feeling a little bit lighter out of this glass, where I was just getting kind of the, the fruity kind of um, uh, flavors on top, but not like the kind of depth that kind of anchors the wine. So, uh, so far, I think I'm giving the edge to the, to the Tyrol glass. Yeah, this is a really pretty wine. Um, this is a wine that sells for uh, under $30 at, if you shop around. Um, and um, that's what I consider to be you know, quite a good price for a Pinot Noir of this quality. And I prefer it, honestly, to a lot of single vineyard uh, bottlings uh, from Oregon. And what I mean by that is that this wine is actually a blend um, from I think a number of different vineyards, not owned by Soder, but actually um, you know, owned by other growers that Soder buys the uh, grapes from and then you know, does their winemaking magic on. Um, so this is you know, from uh, the Willamette Valley, but it could be from various different places in the Win Willamette Valley. Um, a lot of producers will make what they call single vineyard wines, which is from one plot of land and um, often they believe that that makes for a better wine. Um, I don't think that's necessarily the case uh, because sometimes I think blending really kind of, you know, brings out the best in, you know, grapes from different vineyards and you can find that a blend is better than the, the separate components that came from each of those vineyards. 
Um, but in general, single, single vineyard wines do sell for more. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about this wine is that it's actually sold out from the winery's perspective at this point. So all of the bottles that are uh, released of this wine are out in the distribution chains already. So if you want to pick this up, you should try and pick it up quickly if you can find it at a store. After meeting Tony at this, uh, at this tasting and, you know, me telling him that I was definitely going to feature his wines on my blog because I thought they were the best Oregon Pinots I'd had, um, he actually told me that since this wine is sold out and also the Mineral Springs Single Vineyard wine that I tasted that night uh, was the same, he was nice enough to send me a bottle uh, each of the new vintage of the North Valley Pinot and the Mineral Springs Pinot. Um, so I tasted the 2008 version of the uh, North Valley Pinot. The 08 is a little bit young right now, so it shows a little bit more oak, uh, which comes out as a little bit almost kind of caramel flavor. The one thing I would say about the 2008 is it's young and it needs air uh, because the bottle that I had, um, I kind of drank over the course of a couple days actually. And, um, and it really took a number of hours of air for the wine to open up and really show its stuff. But once it did, it you know, had this pretty floral thing, the same kind of juicy acidity that I'm getting from this wine today. So the 2008 is very similar. Um, needs a little time. I would hold it for maybe like about a year and then try to drink them. If you're the impatient type, go ahead, open it now. But, you know, decant it for a few hours if you can and follow it over the course of an evening, which is the way I like to taste a wine and see how it evolves. Let me also tell you a little bit about the Mineral Springs bottling, which is a single vineyard owned by Soder Vineyards. Um, so they both farm the grapes and uh, turn the grapes into wine. And the Mineral Springs Pinot Noir that I tasted first was the uh, 2006. Um, it struck me immediately as the single best uh, wine or Pinot Noir that I'd had from Oregon up to that point. Um, it just had a lot of the hallmarks of what I consider to be the Soder style, having tasted a number of their wines now, um, which I find to be just this kind of balance that's you know very subtle. It's got nuance. It's got elegance. Um, it definitely is very full in flavor and shows more structure uh, than the North Valley bottling does. And when I say structure, what I mean by that is that there's more tannin um, to the fruit. Um, and that means that it's going to take longer for the wine to age to a point where it's kind of really at its peak. Um, and that's kind of what the Mineral Springs bottling is about. This, this bottle being about a $30 bottle, the Mineral Springs bottle is about a $60 bottle of wine definitely a splurge for me, um, but that's the kind of thing where I really kind of noticed for the first time, this is a Pinot Noir from Oregon that I feel is as good as the wines that I would get from California or from Burgundy at the same price level. Right. The uh, Mineral Springs 2006 uh, Soder Vineyards Pinot Noir just kind of had that same level of just deliciousness that makes me kind of, if you were going to rate it on the 100 point scale, makes me say this is 93, 94 points or even higher, you know, what I consider to be a wow wine. I would say that the same thing applies to the 2007 Mineral Springs um, bottling that I had. Um, again, it's a young wine. Um, it needs time. It's got a lot of structure, a lot of tannin. It's probably a little deeper in flavor um, than the North Valley. Uh, that I'm tasting now. Um, so a little more intensity there, but just as much elegance and prettiness to it. Um, it's gonna take a little time. It is it is approachable now if you wanted to drink it now and just try it out, see what it tastes like, but you'll, you have to be prepared for a little bit of tannin, you know, a little of that puckery feeling in your mouth. Uh, but it is delicious, has approachable fruits already, um, and, you know, just has a lot of depth to it and that just like again, that fine-grained tannin to it that just gives it a very velvety mouthfeel to me. Um, so anyway, so I've had fun kind of sharing these wines with you oh, today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Check out the Oregon Pinots. Let me know what you find and what you like. And um, check out the soda wines um, and let me know what you think of those as well. Okay, thanks a lot and uh, cheers.